This is the last leg of the conference. We have uh, Sonia Darwin. Uh, she has been uh, working for more than 19 years on the validation of processes and systems to improve growth and uh, efficiency. She's got a bachelor's degree in business information systems. Thanks to her experience in uh, digital transformation, she supports companies in translating the business uh, strategy into operation. Andrea Cugiano Davidoli, general manager for uh, sh standards, assurance, and certification at the Responsible Jury Council. She has been working for 15 years to improve the ethical conformity and improve quality. She's got a master in human rights and human values and a master in intercultural cooperation in contemporary business environment. They will speak about uh, modernization and digital transformation of thinking and systems and uh, participating in the global uh, industrial sector and the uh, positive impact in the supply chain. They will speak about the uh, transformation with the objective to inspire and reassure those who are going through these changes. Uh, as soon as you like, and thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the invitation. It is a pleasure to, to be able to participate today. My name is Andrea Cojano Davidoyo, and um, as per the introduction, I am General Manager for Standards, Assurance and Certification with the Responsible Jewelry Council. I have been with the Council for a little over two years, and I'm joined here today by my colleague, Sunet. Thank you, Andrea, and hello, everyone. Thank you for your warm welcome. Um, my name is Sonnet Dowden. Um, as for the introduction, I am the Senior Manager of Digital Projects of RJC. I have been with the RJC for just over three years now, and uh, we're here to share with you uh, how we've used our digital transformation journey so far um, to deliver efficiency in our certification system. Thank you. Just to give an outline of how uh, the presentation uh, will be sort of shared between myself and Andrea. Um, Andrea will be uh, giving an overview of who the RJC are and what we do, uh, some, some sort of overview on our membership. Uh, I will then uh, share some background on our transformation journey from a technical and project management perspective. And then I'll hand back over to Andrea, who will give a case study of the RJC and from the user perspective of how our digital transformation journey so far has uh, improved uh, processes in the certification system. Then I will share very brief sort of key learnings that we've, we've had so far on our journey and what's next for the RJC. So I'll just hand over to Andrea, who will kickstart with uh, an overview of who we are and what we do. Thank you. Thank you, Sonnet. First of all, the Responsible Jewelry Council is a membership organization. And um, we are also the scheme owner, the standard owner for the Jewelry Industry Sustainability Standard Code of Practices. We believe that more sustainable, responsible supply chains are achievable by implementing our code of practices um, the standard includes strict environmental, human rights, and supply chain due diligence. We also believe that by transforming the world's jewelry supply chains to be responsible and sustainable, uh, the RJC can help to create beautiful things in a beautiful way. And therefore, in doing so, we build and deepen trust in the global jewelry industry and its future. So people continue to hold jewelry close to their hearts for, for centuries to come. This is, as such, our promise to the customer, and this is our mission at the core of what we do. The RJC was founded in 2005 by 14 companies to lead change with an ambition agenda, to build trust and confidence with consumers and within the supply chain from all the way from mining to retail. Today, of course, we continue to support our members. We continue to develop transformative partnerships to move our industry beyond compliance 
and to deliver meaningful and measurable impact on a global scale. When it comes to our membership base, we have now reached 1,600, um, over 1,680 members all over the world, globally. Um, just to give you an idea, we have 76 countries where there are RJC COP certified facilities, and there are 16 countries where we have RJC COC certified facilities. When it comes to our standards, we have two. One is called Code of Practices, one is called Chain of Custody. The Code of Practices is mandatory for our members. They join and then they have two years to become certified against the Code of Practices. This code is focused on management practices. This includes labor, human rights, supply chain due diligence, health and safety, gender equality, non-discrimination, product integrity and the environment. It's important also to outline that it is aligned with the UN guiding principles of business and human rights and the OECD due diligence. The chain of custody, our second standard, is voluntary for certified members against the code of practices. So members can only um, look for certification against the chain of custody after they have achieved certification against the code of practices. This code, as per its name, it's focused on material and the flow of gold, silver and platinum metals through the supply chain. And it does include conflict sensitive sourcing. And now I'm handing back to Sunet to take you through our transformation journey. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. So as sustainability continues to grow in importance for consumers and organizations worldwide, demand for RJC membership has remained high. In 2020, the pandemic accelerated our requirement to develop new and efficient ways of working and serving our members and stakeholders. In fact, demand for RJC membership increased in 2020 and 2021. RJC's board and executives understood the value and importance of a sound digital strategy and set this as a strategic deliverable with significant investment in modernizing our systems and processes. So in addition to meeting the challenge of growth and finding new ways of working in this new norm that we all found ourselves in, we also wanted to improve our member and stakeholder experience. As Andrea just mentioned, with over 1,680 members and counting across the globe, uh, across sort of 76 countries um, and multiple time zones, we wanted to create digital tools to enable members to access resources and manage their membership and certification wherever they were located. We also wanted to obviously improve uh, efficiency in our certification system to keep abreast of changes in the regulatory landscape uh, to demonstrate impacts, uh, the impacts of our standards through uh, quantifiable and data driven insights and to gain an end-to-end -end view, a unified view of our members uh, throughout their certification journey. We also wanted to maximize our operational efficiency and sustainability within our teams to better serve our members. So these were some of the key uh, objectives driving our transformation journey. Start where you are, use what you have and do what you can. We think that this quote by Arthur Ashe fits our case study perfectly. Uh, if you read or listen to anything uh, on the topic of digital transformation, the words journey and marathon will come up at some point. For us at the RJC, our journey started by migrating our legacy systems to the cloud, decommissioning our old IT infrastructure and introducing new tools and ways of working. Uh, we collaborated with our team uh, on the digital strategy to foster ownership. Each department takes lead in shaping and redesigning their processes. They are an integral part of all the requirements gathering workshops, uh, sort of all the process mappings that, that goes on uh, before a system is developed and deployed. Um, it was very important to identify and engage the right digital partners to embark on this journey. Next, 
we identified uh, scalable and secure platforms for our back office and online systems. Then came the unavoidable task of migrating and cleansing uh, data from multiple silo systems. So, and also significant time was spent mapping processes and scoping for this project. Thank you, next slide. What we've learned is that this is an iterative synergy of people, process, and technology. So these are some of the approaches that have worked best for us so far. First, to recognize and normalize that it's a journey of continuous improvement, uh, to define which met methodology best suits our organization, to define and agree what success looks like at each phase, to keep project teams engaged throughout, especially as they carry out their day-to-day -day duties, and also the importance of managing expectations, being prepared to communicate budgetary and time constraints. Change management is also key um, to ensure smooth transition whilst minimizing risks and disruptions. Thank you. So in terms of our roadmap so far, we started this journey in 2020 by the migration, as I mentioned. In 2021, we launched uh, our newly designed CRM system and started the first phase of our certification automations. A lot of these processes were manual up until then um, and very time consuming. We also launched uh, the first phase of our member portal. For the very first time, our members were able to sort of log in, uh, gain um, access to the information that the RJC held on them, uh, make changes, uh, make online payments and so on. Andrea will share more about that in the user, the, the user case study. In 2022, we launched the second phase uh, of our automations on our CRM system and launched our digitized application system. So now applicants were able to uh, complete an enhanced due diligence application form digitally and submit, uh, and submit, uh, sorry, <laughs> submit supporting documentations. We also uh, strengthened cohesion of data across our departments. And this is something that we will continue to do and one of the benefits that we'll continue to see as digit digitization continues. In 2023, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this uh, in terms of what's next, um, but we're looking to, we're working on launching an enhanced due diligence system for our existing membership and also to de develop the first phase of our audit portal. And as, as always at each phase, we are continuing to add more automations as, as we go along. Thank you. So now over to you, Andrea, for the case study. Thank you, Sonette. I will walk you through the perspective, the, the user experience of the certification process, um, all of these steps and um, transformations that Senate has implemented have obviously been used, reused, and reviewed, um, and they now make up our certification process. Just to give you a bit of an overview of what the RJC certification process is outside of, of digital. So first of all, step one is the self-assessment of the member, which is a questionnaire where the member will answer questions and self-assess themselves against the code of practices. They need to do that before they embark on the audit journey and they need to provide that to their auditor. It also helps them understand where they are compared to the code of practices and what they need to address before they actually um, go for the audit. Second step is the audit, which is done by a third party, independent RJC approved audit firm selected by the RJC member. It's a relationship between the member, the RJC member and the audit firm. Afterwards, once the audit is completed, the auditor will complete the report and the report will be submitted to the RJC and reviewed by the RJC certification department. At the auditor's recommendation, the certification decision is the next step, followed by the RJC issuing the certificate. Next step, the last one, is review and recertification 
this means that the audit cycle, we have an audit cycle of three years. Um, we can have an audit cycle of a one year, but the generic one is of three years. Members can have a midterm review or a surveillance audit. And then after that, they will um, resume the steps and embark again on the next auditing cycle, going um, back to the self-assessment audit and so on. Moving on to the digital challenge and leaving the operational side um, aside, both the RJC certification and the underpinning assurance processes, they integrate analytics and data insights um, to understand how the audit firms and the auditors are performing, where the RJC members are on their certification journey, and of course, how members are performing against the RJC standards. As you can imagine, the data volume is quite significant and as Sunet mentioned, at times manually introduced onto the system. Your, the RJC certificates are also issued based on audit and member data in a bespoke design. We give you, we wanted to give you a bit of an idea of the volume um, that we have. And you can see that for 2022, we've received 807 audit reports and we were able to issue 828 certificates against each of each report reviewed and against um, each certificate issued, there's a significant amount of work that comes behind and there's a significant amount of data. And of course, that was our digital challenge to be able to manage that and still deliver the service to our members. Following our digital transformation, we've had a few digital wins that we would like to share with you. So, for example, now relevant data is captured, is accessible, controlled and monitored. We have charts and dashboards based on live data. This in turn has helped improve, improve the trend analysis, the reporting and the transparency. All the way, not just internal transparency, but also public transparency within our 2022 report that was issued last year. Of course, this also led to stronger departmental communication, collaboration and transparency. We were able to implement automated email reminders to the RGC members on audit deadlines, which means that the members will receive an email six months, 12 months before their recertification deadlines, and then again six months before their recertification deadline to remind them to start preparing for the audit, to start engaging with their chosen audit firm. We can track our member certification journey as well. Um, of, and of course, via the member portal that Sanet mentioned, the members can access and update their own information. And they can also pay for their membership renewal via the same member portal. Um, any applicants can apply online and submit their documentation together with their attachments. And finally, um, maybe one of the, the, the most important digital wins for us um, is the fact that we can generate the RJC certificate with a click of a button now. And it's literally as, as easy as, as that. Um, all of these digital wins have enabled us to improve um, the service, to provide a better and faster service to our member and to our members. And we, we continue to be committed to improve um, and to um, go on this transformative journey. And uh, back to you, Sonny. Thank you. Thank you. So just to share some key learnings that we've had so far. Um, technology isn't a silver bullet. It's, uh, it doesn't fix everything uh, straight away. Uh, be prepared uh, for some discomfort as processes are redesigned, uh, changes is, you know, it's, it's uncomfortable, um, but it's exciting. Um, thank you. The next one, business and leaders need to show up. It's so important that, um, that you know, we have the backing and the um, sort of support of the business leaders. It's strategy, not the technology that di dictates digital transformation. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. Um, I like this, this uh, quote by uh, Peter Drucker. Um, 
a clear digital strategy isn't enough if you don't have the input and the buy-in from users and key st stakeholders. It's important to bring them along on that journey. Um, the process of involving uh, the certification and assurance uh, and membership departments uh, as integral parts of the designing of the new process uh, and the new systems is, is absolutely critical. Um, so, and also to identify who your champions are in the team and engage them. Uh, tie results to something measurable. Again, probably tied to the, the first point. Um, you know, just having additional uh, automations and all the bells and whistles doesn't actually mean more benefits. Uh, so identifying what, uh, what success actually looks like and what will make the biggest um, impact is, is key along with your stakeholders. And the next one, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Uh, there is a learning curve uh, that we all have to go through in designing these systems. It's an iterative process of sort of, uh, you know, designing, planning, implementing, um, sort of learning uh, sort of backups and, and feedbacks and then going back into the loop and and improving as you go along. Uh, so those were some of the key learnings that we've had so far. In terms of what's next uh, in 2023 and beyond, we will continue to develop systems to improve our member experience uh, and also to improve our insights on the impacts that our standards um, are having uh, across the industry. Uh, we'll start work on the development of our auditor portal to further uh, automate some of our certification processes and launch the enhanced due diligence system via our member portal for our existing members. Uh, this is particularly important in terms of the changing uh, regulatory landscape in our industry and continued development of various digital digital tools to enable members throughout the supply chain to remain certified, engaged and committed to the RJC. And that's it, I think, from us. Um, I, Andrea, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add on this. Thank you very much for um, having us share some of our insights with you. Andrea. Thank you, Sonet. I also wanted to share Legor for the invitation today and for your time and attention. And I hope we've shared a bit of light into what the RJC does. And if you're curious to find out more about us, please don't hesitate to get in touch. We're always there, ready to answer any questions um, applicants or members have. Thank you. Grazie mille a Sonia Andrea di RJC. Many thanks uh, to Sonia Andrea of AJC.